So, in other news, Justin Gamble Gamble, who is a friend of Anthony's. Anthony, if you are in from the sports world and you collect sports cards, it's been some time since we talked about sports cards. A lot of interesting stuff going on. Well, this one is about Anthony and his relationship with Justin or Justin Gamble Gamble. So he has another YouTube. The other YouTube channel is much bigger than his sports card YouTube channel. He has stopped posting there. And I guess the algorithm, I can tell you what the algorithm does. It's really funny. The algorithm sometimes doesn't like a channel. And then no matter what you do, you cannot get your views up. I believe that's kind of what happened to his original larger channel. So he decided to spin it off and do this new channel, which is uh, his daily uploads. I give him a lot of credit. Most people don't do daily uploads. I do four of them a day, so I know they are difficult to do. Uh, this is a picture that Justin Anthony posted. Jonah and I are ripping, blanking South Korea in three weeks. New film on the way. Ha ha. Thanks to the Timepiece Gentleman and Anthony W. Farrar for sponsoring the Vision Real Friend. So, again, I'm assuming you're coming from the sports card realm. Uh, Anthony is known to be one of the largest scammers. He's $5 million in debt, according to Anthony. And he has stolen multiple people's watches uh, in, via consignment, which is very fascinating given the sports card relationship with Justin Gamble Gamble. And we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge a little later. But uh, Justin was called out by Dan the Cardman and then Sports Card Radio, I think in that order. And he was selling mystery boxes. Now, the mystery box could be anything. It could be even another box. It could be a boat, right? It could be anything. Well, these mystery boxes, the ones that were selected at least and were shown on live stream, had very little value. So again, this is an article on Sports Card Radio, which I've covered before. Uh, we were, I was actually mentioned in a cease and desist by Jeff Wilson, Sports Card Investor, to Sports Card Radio. And then they mentioned both my name, my agency, where I live, and you know Jeff Wilson style, right? There were a few pages at least mentioning my company and how uh, Jeff's company was just better overall, right? Uh, and that was Sports Card Investor. So Sports Card Radio, I still follow them. Uh, very interesting. And again, Dan the Cardman, uh, give those two a follow. But these comps, so people would pay $385. They would pull a card, which is $225. Now, you might be like, oh, that's not bad at all. That's about what you expect, right? If, what, what do you expect? You're going to your casino. You're going to... Um, you're, you're gambling, right? Now, what not, which I have been very critical of the past, they allow mystery packs, but under their policy, you have to tell them what the ceiling, the floor, and the average is. Uh, even Backyard Breaks, which is known to do some shady things, they follow that policy. I think actually uh, tonight or last night, they had a mystery pack for Farage, right? They do it. They do it on the whatnot policy because they are very integrated into whatnot. This, it seems that people were very, very confused um, what the actual average would be, what the ceiling was, was what the floor was, what the... The list of cards was. Now, Justin did respond to it, and he said, hey, it's a gamble. It's As a lawyer, if Justin was my client, this would scare the bejesus out of me. Those rules that WhatNot has isn't to protect the customers. It's to protect WhatNot. Let me repeat this again. The rules that WhatNot has about mystery packs and repacks is not to protect the end customer. It isn't because they give a shit about the end customer. They want to make as much money from the end customer as they can get. It is to protect themselves from being sued to the ground. Each state, and here's the dangerous part about this, um, each state has different gambling laws. They simply do. 
and you don't know where your buyer's coming from, you, the seller, may know that your own state's selling laws, but you don't know where the buyer is coming from, and a buyer reports you to your attorney general, you're going to jail. Like, I'm not saying you're going to lose money and be fine. You will be that too. But you could go to jail for unregulated gambling. Again, on, on this format, it's never been explained to me. Maybe Justin can explain to me. Maybe I'm, you know, I, I don't have the time to watch his live stream. How do you know the person buying a mystery pack is not under 18, right? Gambling. How do you know that they are not like 12 years old and they stole their mom's credit card and now they're buying a bunch of mystery packs? How do you know that? Do you ask for their ID? How do you know um, if they have the mental capacity to buy this item, mystery pack? It, it's the whole argument about the QVC. And there, there are a lot of legal cases where, you know, the individual with the credit card, you really shouldn't have a credit card. Um, and gambling on packs, mystery packs, I think we all kind of can understand that mystery packs are a really good way to make money from your uh, fan base. And it's a really, really good way for you to get out of really bad cards that you don't want anymore or you have trouble moving at a good price point. So I'm already against mystery packs. Um, many of you will say, oh, well, how is this different from Amazon mystery packs, right? Uh, and Amazon, Amazon, you know, the, the mystery packs, the Charizard mystery packs that you always see in PokeRev, uh, he gets a lot of good hits and then you see them on like Poke Cruise, and he gets all the crappy stuff, right? Because no one knows who Poke Cruise is. Um, yeah, there is regulation coming down the pipes, right? Uh, just because what you're doing right now, no one cares. No one. Th th let me let me explain a few different things. One, you could be doing something illegal, but it's done kind of like okay, everyone's doing it. Let's not catch everyone. You can speed and not get caught, right? There are plenty of people who speed and they never get caught. But if you do get caught, you are going to be punished immensely. Basically, in my opinion, this is one way to look at the law to offset the other people who speed. So if you steal from Target and you stole 20 times and they caught you one time, you're going to be punished far more than 20 times because there are other people who stole from Target and they didn't get caught. And you stole 19 times and you didn't ca get caught. So Justin Gamble Gamble, uh, associate of Anthony, perhaps student of Anthony. I don't know if the film ever got made from South Korea. I don't believe it has. I um, don't believe it. he's gone to South Korea uh, recently. And it's interesting, the association. So Anthony, now we know Anthony is a scammer. So in the watch community, everyone knows Anthony is a scammer. He has admitted so. He's confessed that he is a scammer. Okay, and we know that the people he associates with, let, let's let's n name them, are at least a little, Trevor has a criminal record. Trevor's wife, I believe, has a criminal record. As I'm hearing allegedly, um, allegedly Trevor has a criminal rec record. Uh, we got Liz and Darby, <laughs> the lizard, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, <laughs> and Darby the beard, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know it's. it's it's like it is what it is, right? And then you got that Italian couple. You got Luis. You got uh, Z. Who's he's gone? He's gone. No one knows what happened to the dude. Um, you you have Alan. You got a lot of interesting characters in the uh, Anthony Spear. And uh, not only are they interesting, they're also shady. As some of them are very shady individuals, right? That like and Anthony, of course, is the ringleader. He's ha somehow been able to um find these individuals and form a team of them of all of them I mean, yeah can you imagine you just formed a team it's like the avengers i made a video it's kind of like the avengers assemble but it's like watch scammers assemble <laughs> like you know we're going to try to scam the watch community for all they have so anyway interesting association um maybe we'll talk about more of the legal things a little later but uh i just want to put out there that yeah, these two guys are related. Justin Gamble Gamble and Anthony Farrar. Wow.